treatment of perforated diverticulitis has evolved over time. 30 years ago, a three-stage surgical approach was still being performed. Since that time, Hartman's procedure has become the procedure of choice for managing perforated diverticulitis. Despite multiple prospective randomized trials that demonstrate equivalent outcomes for primary anastomosis and lupial ileostomy when compared to Hartman's procedure, there has been little change in the approach to perforated diverticulitis. The reasons for this failure to change practice remain unclear. Potentially, it is a failure to trust the results of the prior trials, as both were stopped early. The trial by Urkofler and colleagues was stopped due to excessive complications in the Hartman's reversal arm of the trial. Here, I review the latest trial to make the comparison. The Verdi trial, or Hartman's procedure, or primary anastomosis for generalized peritonitis due to perforated diverticulitis. It has been hypothesized now, as in the past, that each operation carries its own mortality risk, especially the Hartman's reversal. By avoiding this procedure, the expectation is that overall mortality would be improved. Additionally, the complications associated with combined procedures would be the same or less for primary anastomosis. Similarly, ICU length of stay would be less and stoma reversal would be more common after loop ileostomy. In this prospective randomized trial by Bordeaux and colleagues, each of these outcomes was examined. The trial was performed in four tertiary referral centers in France. All patients presented with suspected Hinchy 3 or 4 perforated, perforated diverticulitis based on CT scan. These patients were subsequently randomized preoperatively to undergo the selected procedure after confirmation of the diagnosis at laparotomy. Nastomotic technique was at the discretion of the attending surgeon as was the choice of diverting loop ileostomy or diverting loop colostomy. Patients were excluded if septic shock or multisystem organ failure were present on admission. Five patients randomized to primary anastomosis underwent a Hartman's procedure due to development of septic shock in two cases and technical difficulties in the other three. Patients were also excluded if they were unable to provide their own consent. Stoma reversal was at least three months post-op for ileostomy and at least six months post-op for, for Hartman's procedure. Originally, the planned enrollment was 246 patients. However, this was based on a mortality assumption of 21.1% for Hartman's patients. The actual mortalities for the procedures were 7.7% for Hartman's and 4.0% for primary anastomosis. Due to these differences and the actual rate of enrollment, the study was stopped as it was unexpected that a difference could be detected. With respect to the results, there were no differences in baseline patient characteristics. Mortality after 18 months was lower, but not significantly in the primary anastomosis group, and complications were similar. There were two deaths after the Hartman's procedure, two after the primary anastomosis, and two after the Hartman's reversal. One death in each group was deemed unrelated to the procedures. After the primary procedure, mortality was 54% for the primary anastomosis group and 42% for the Hartman's group, with one anastomotic leak in the primary anastomosis group. After 18 months of follow-up, 65% of Hartman's patients underwent reversal compared to 96% of primary anastomosis patients. Operative time for stoma reversal was significantly shorter in the primary anastomosis group, and there was one death in the Hartman's group. However, total complications were similar. How do we put all this into perspective? Combining these results with the prior trials implies that primary anastomosis should be the preferred surgical approach to hinging 3 and 4 periphery diverticulitis. The rate of stoma reversal is almost certainly higher in the primary anastomosis group with other outcomes being similar.